Hi guys, Dennis here from Respect Studios. Uh, this is part three of the Scrollrex Snap to UI elements. I just wanted to make this part because I received some questions about the UI, and uh, the, some people have had problems, not problems but issues. Uh, so, first of all, uh, some people say that they don't see. They don't see uh, exactly the same numbers that I see when I make the tutorial, which the first the first element should be at 300 units, the second element at 600 units. This is because the the distance is dependent on the screen size because the UI is scaling with the screen size. As you can see here in the scene view, when I scale, the canvas is scaling with the screen. So if you are making the tutorial or if you are making the UI while you have split the scene view and the game view uh, like this it you will have different different distances this is why in the tutorial I am using custom layout where I have a game and scene view on full screen and when I set to 1024 768 I know that the distances will be exactly 300 but it doesn't matter because even if you are like this and you don't have exactly 300 distant units distance between the buttons it will still work it doesn't matter now what we'll do in this tutorial is we are going to make the buttons to be like infinite so if you go here button one will be here as well uh, as you can see i have just named the buttons so we can see them like different buttons they are not just button 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 but button one button two button three and so on so let's get started with this this is the script that we have written in the previous two tutorials and uh, for the purpose of this tutorial we are going to make one more public float which will be array again and we'll make it this reposition and the distance reposition we will use it to take the current position of the buttons and uh, the, the reason we need another float array and we don't use the distance is because uh, the button distance is the distance actually that we calculate between each button in the center is always using absolute values but we want to use negative values for this purpose as well so in the start we want to say this reposition to be equal to new float button length so we need the same the same length of the array as the as the number of the buttons and uh, we're going in the update function where in the first loop that we check the distance we're going to actually say this reposition to be equal to and uh, actually uh, from now on we're not going to use the center the transform of the of the ul elements but we're going to use their anchor their rect transform position so we'll say center that get component rect transform that position that x to be minus button i that get component rect transform that position that x. So here we actually take the actual distance between the center and the button so if the button is in in negative position it will display a negative value as you can see we have distance reposition uh, even though they are in the private variables I have made, made them public so we can see them in the inspector for now and uh, when I play oops I have an error Uh, 
yes, I have to use I here. In the oh. okay, one moment. Yeah, I have to use I because it's array. So when I play, <coughs> you can see that element one is negative 300 element two is negative 600 and so on now because we are already calculating the distance uh, the the distance reposition the actual distance we are going just to just say math f that absolute and we are going to use the distance reposition so we don't have to calculate it again distance reposition i and uh, that's it now the distance will have the same the same the same values of the distance reposition but all values will be in absolute uh, numbers so now we're going to say here we'll make one if this reposition i because we're looping is greater than 1000 we're just hard coding here you might want to change them in some dynamic way but I'm just going to hard code them for now so if the distance reposition meaning if the button is going above a thousand units away from the center that's checking every button we're going to say one oops sorry current x to be equal to button uh, button i that get yeah button i that get component rect transform that anchor it position that x and we're going to say float current y to be button I get component rec transform anchored position that y. Now we are getting the actual x and y positions of the current button. Uh, we are getting both because we can't apply just x or y to the position of the button so we will make uh, vector2 and we will name it new anchored position it will be uh, equal to new vector2 and we will take the current position of the button and we are going to say plus button length which is the number of, the, of our buttons multiplied by button distance and for the y we'll just use current y and now we'll say button i that get component rect transform that anchored position to be equal to new anchored position so what we currently say is the x if if the button goes above thousand units uh, away from the center, uh, it will take its current position, and it will add button length, which in our case is eight at the moment, when we multiplied by button distance. So we have eight multiplied by three hundred, two thousand and four hundred units. So the button will be moved at three thousand, uh, two thousand and four and four hundred units. Uh, to the side which will mean it will move to the other side of the of all the buttons so if we save and if we go back to unity if let me just switch to the other layout if I say if I play you can see button 1 is this one if I start moving button wall will pop here when it reach thousand units when I continue moving button 2 will come here 
when I continue button 4 we have one problem though we can't go further away from button 8 so even if I continue moving them you can see that they go but if button 8 goes to the last button position uh, we'll, we'll move right here this is because the actual lerping we're checking the minimum button number which is the minimum distance so if it's button 1 and uh, if button 1 is already moved like here and we, we see that button 1 is the closest to the center when we move it it will say lerp to button and it will say button number which will be 1 multiplied by button distance which will be 300 so it will move actually the scroll panel to the to the zero because we have actually but not button one but button zero because it's the first element and it will be moved to zero not to 2400 so it can continue for this we're going to change that line and we're going to change it in a way so you can from now on you'll be able to make the buttons with different distance between each other not the same distance for our buttons so we're going to say lerp to button and we'll say mm, minus button which will be my button number so we'll say the, the we're going to say take the, the button with the minimum distance which we calculate here so if the minimum distance is button 1 it will it will get button 1 and it will get component rect transform that anchor it position direct so from now on the panel will not be checking which is the minimum button and then multiplying to the button distance from now on the panel will be actually checking where is the button and will be moving to that position this way we'll be able to move the buttons far away from the original position and the panel will be, will be following them so if I play now you can see here button 1 and if I continue button 2 we see that we're at button 8 at the moment we can go to button 1 again and uh, we can continue sliding like this forever and they will always snap you can see the scroll panel is right here uh, the, the only problem at the moment is that if you start if you go like here and you want to go back you can't first element is now button 5 and you can't go back so what we have to do is we have to go up here where we check if button 1 if the button is far is at uh, about 1000 units away from the center and uh, after that we're going to say if this reposition i is less than 1000 units we're going to make again these temporary variables float x float current x and float current y we'll make another vector too but this time instead of adding it will subtract and finally we'll say button i to be equal to new anchor position and now if we play whoa okay one moment oh oh the problem is that we have to be less than negative thousand not because if we are less than a thousand it will start trying to position them so if we play now the only problem is that you can see that the the, the last element is too far away so we can adjust this by adding a thousand and two hundred for example not a thousand and it will be okay now so now when you play button 8 will be moved be behind button 1 
and if we start moving you can see that they always change and you can go back and you can go you can do that infinitely the the other benefit from changing from this slurp to this slurp where it checks the actual position of the button is that you can now select every button and move it with different position with different distance you don't need to you don't need to have the same distance between the buttons you need to keep them so you can see uh, 1 and 8 have bigger distance and if I start sliding to the side they will always have that bigger distance and it will always snap to the center the only issue again is that if you you have to just take care of the screen size if it's too big you have to make these higher higher values so it don't have to uh, switch them uh, always like this so uh, I think that's it for now yeah uh, thanks for the likes I'm really happy you liked the tutorial and uh, I will make other tutorials soon bye